want to welcome you to Reboot. My name is Kelly Slesser and I'm delighted to be hosting this event brought to you by the City of Sydney and supported by New South Wales Government Business Connect programme. Before we start, I do want to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Aura Nation, traditional owners of the land and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging, as well as acknowledging that we are all here today on different lands and so acknowledge the traditional owners of all the lands from wherever you join us today. And it, it really is a privilege and honor for me to do that. Um, if this is your first reboot session, welcome, welcome. I've seen some familiar faces and familiar, oh, I should say familiar names because I can't see your faces. I've seen some familiar names in the attendee list. So if you've been here before, welcome back. Reboot is a series of nine free business webinar webinars developed in response to the pandemic to support business recover, rebuild, engage, and grow their customers and revenue. And these are weekly masterclasses with some of Australia's leading business experts, covering topics like digital, which we have today, by yours truly, branding, content creation, financial planning, and more. There are nine events in total. This is week three, and they happen every Tuesday from 12 to 1, except next week, which we're taking a a hard-earned break for Easter. Um, so book your sessions. The next session is with the amazing Lisa Muxworthy, chief and editor of news.com.au, the number one news site in Australia. And that will be in two weeks today. Um, and she'll be taking you some amazing insights around driving, um, developing content that connects and pitching to media. So that's going to be an awesome session. And Rachel's going to drop the link in the chat. We have the lovely Rachel on. You can't see her beautiful face, but she's doing all of the links in the chat and answering your questions and things like that. So thank you, Rachel. Um, so the sessions are all recorded. And we're recording this one, so you will get a follow-up EDM, which will be sent to you on Thursday with a link to the recording and the session as well. Today, I am hosting and presenting, so I've got two jobs. I just need to get both of them right. Um, and it's a hard act to follow Melissa Brown and Naomi Simpson, for those of you that were on for those sessions. They were both amazing. Um, but I'll be covering how to build a winning platform. So everything from user experience, how to connect, how to create great product pages. Thank you, Judith, I really appreciate you. Um, everything from, from um, driving a customer onto your digital channel and converting them into a sale. So we'll be going through that. There's a QA and a function um, down at the bottom on your left-hand side, maybe, Q&A. If you have any questions, please pop them in. At the end of the session, I'll run a 20 minute. I'm just gonna give you a little presentation. And then I'm going to, we've got a couple of case studies that are joining us um, to walk through their website experience and I'll give them some live feedback. And then at the end, we'll have about 15 minutes for Q&A. So if you have any questions about your website, about your user experience, about um, building a new website or building your first website, drop them in the chat and I will answer them at the end, as many as I possibly can. Sorry, drop them in Q&A, not the chat. Q&A, sorry, Rachel. Um, and I will answer as many as I can at the end. So I'm going to weirdly give you my own bio rather than giving you someone else's bio. Um, so a quick background on me. Oh, one thing to mention, sorry. At the end of the session, we'll also pop a survey in the chat. It is great if you can give us as much feedback as possible, how we can improve, what we're doing well, what needs to change so we can make the next six sessions as amazing as possible and you get as much value out of them as, as you possibly can. So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce myself awkwardly. So my name is Kelly Slesser. I have been in retail and technology for all of my life, around 20 years. I started in the UK in a, a telco. I came to Australia and for five years ran a mobile agency, working with big brands like David Jones. I worked with um, FMCG like Diageo and Coca-Cola. Then in search of work-life balance, which we all know is a mythical character, I started my own consultancy and went in and started working for Westfields or Centre Group and working with their retailers on helping them 
get online and grow their online channels. And during that five years, I was very fortunate to work with brands from Woolworths to your butchers, your bakers and your candlestick makers and your hair salon down the road. I got to work with all of them. And um, in the last year, I have built a click and collect platform for um, a shopping centre. I built a, an AI technology platform that personalises um, a shopping experience. And I've worked with over a thousand retailers um, to help them grow online. And yes, I have to take a deep breath when I say that. And the reason I'm telling you this is, is not to blow my own trumpet, but it, I, I think, you know, it's important that you see that I've worked on technology and in technology. I've built technology and I've worked with retailers to build their technology. So I've got thousands of insights to share with you and I'm going to get through as many as I can in this very short space of time. So generally, when I speak to small businesses and, and, you know, don't jump off anyone in the service business because this can be an accountant. This can be someone who's selling product. When I speak to small businesses, there's generally two problems that they have, sometimes three. First one is they don't have enough traffic coming to their site, to their online presence. And your online presence is your new digital shop front. The second issue is that they have traffic coming, but they don't necessarily convert the people that are coming to their site into sales. Number three is both. So I just want you to drop in the chat. What is your problem? Is it number one? You've got traffic, but it's not convert. Sorry. Is it number one? You've got traffic, but it's not converting. Is it number two? You don't have any traffic or is it number three? Both. Go. Just gives me a sense of both. Okay, one, three, no traffic. Number three, not converting. Number two, both. Awesome. Okay, gives me a really good sense. So what we're going to focus on today is actually the conversions. Because the challenge is there is no point in opening a store, opening a, a, a business, and putting up big signs, paying for, you know, um, fit out, paying for signage, paying for staff, driving people into your business, and then not actually selling to them. So I always start at the conversion. If we can't get your conversions happening, there is no point in driving traffic to your site. So that's my number one place to start. And it's the question I always ask people when people say, hey, you know, I don't have enough traffic. I go, well, what's your conversion rate? And if your conversion rate is low, and we'll talk about the difference between low and high conversion rates in a minute. If your conversion rate is low, then that's what we're going to fix first before we start spending money on driving traffic. All right. I'm just going to share my screen and we are going to get into it. Can everyone see my screen? I'm hoping so. I'm going to take it as a yes because I can't hear anyone. Awesome. All right. What we do know is that retail will change more in the next 10 years than it has in the last thousand years. And it's it's already happened. We've already seen that through the pandemic. Now, again, service businesses or, or creatives do not jump off because what's really important to note here is that retail is at the cold, hard face of digital because we're selling products online and 84 percent of us go to look for products online. So service businesses, creatives, whatever business you're in can learn a lot from what retailers are doing at the moment. Retailers are really at the cold front of it. The second piece of information is, which is really important, is it's changing behavior. So I love the story about my friend's 80-year-old gran who had never shopped online before the pandemic and now does most of her shopping online. That's not to say she doesn't go into physical store, but you know we're constantly changing hearts and minds. I totally believe that the physical place absolutely is, is, has a place and is really important to the customer journey, but I believe we've got to overlay that with a good digital presence. Australians are amongst the biggest e-commerce spenders globally. On average, in 2021, we spent $2,700. And online traffic is growing. It was up 20% last year at $53 billion spend. But conversion rates are low, and I'm going to talk through why in a minute. 
the acquisition cost is going through the roof. So the cost to get a customer to your site through Facebook ads, Google ads, whatever it might be, is going through the roof at the moment. It's really expensive. So this is the time to enhance your digital presence. This is, this is kind of the beginning of the cusp of craziness. It feels crazy right now, but it's only going to get crazier. So this is the time to get this digital shop front, service front, whatever your business is right, because this is the time when you can make the most cut through. But what we've got to do is build the foundations and get those foundations right. So if we can get the technology and the platforms right and make it easy for you to layer your magic and sales on top, then we're going to sell more to customers. So I follow a process to build a winning platform. I'm going to talk you through the different platforms in a minute. But my process is, number one, you have to understand your customer experience and identify how the customer is moving through your website and on your journey and on your digital channels. If you don't have a website yet, don't worry. There's some tips and tricks in here for that. But if you do, I'm going to get you to do some work here. So, you know, in Naomi's session, the Mel session, you just kind of sat back and listened. This is a, this is a hands-on working session. So we're going to identify the barriers for your customer when they come to your site. Then we're going to select the best tools for functionality to make it easier for customers to do business with you. And then we're going to optimize that with plugins to increase their conversion rates. So the first thing is removing the barriers. Okay. So what happens is 100 customers come to your site. So they've searched for accountant, hairdressers, beautician, whatever it might be. They get to your site and on the front page, 40% of them will drop off straight away and go, no, nope, that wasn't what I was looking for. No, I don't like the design. No, I, I don't even know what they do. I'm going to drop off straight away. Then out of that, another 35 will then get to a product page. So they're looking for a product or service or to book your restaurant and they'll drop off. 35 of them will go, no, it's not easy. You haven't got what I want. I'm going to drop off. Then they'll get to the cart or the booking page and another 15 will go, the cat screamed, the dog barked, the kid meowed and the kettle boiled and they will drop off. You've got eight people left that are sitting in your checkout or sitting in your booking form that have filled in the details, but only two of them will push the connect button, which is really scary when you think about the amount of work we spend or the amount of time we spend driving that 100 people in. So my job is to increase that number at the bottom. Just out of interest, for those of you that do know your conversion rate, can you drop it in the chat? I'd love to get a sense of what the conversion rate is. And if you don't know, just put don't know. And that would be, give me a really good um, guide as to who, who is tracking that and who isn't. Don't know, don't know, not sure, don't know, very little, don't know. Cool, not sure. Okay, for those of you that don't know, in my next session, which is on um, search engines, I will show you how to set that up. But for now, Jennifer, two to three percent is, is good. It, generally across the board, industry standard is about two percent, whether you're a service business or you're a retailer or you're a um, restaurant restaurants are slightly higher, but two to three percent is pretty good. So, Jennifer, for you, I would be looking at driving more traffic, not more conversions, um, because your conversion rate is sitting at a good point. All right, so I'm going to get you to do a little exercise now. All good, all good with the cats. I, I don't feel like you're shouting at me, Michael. It's all good. Um, okay, so your exercise is I want you to actually jump on your website now. For those of you that have a website, 60% of your customers will be coming through a mobile phone. So when you're testing your website, test it first on a mobile phone. Don't test it first on the desktop and see what the experience is like on a mobile phone. So I want you to check your links and your buttons. Are they working? Are they easily to, easy to find? We call it big CTAs or big call to action. So I'm asking you to do a big call to action right now. Jump on your website, check out your buttons. 
it's a big call to action. It's like, it's like Michael putting in capital letters, don't know. He's shouting at me. He's telling me what he needs me to hear. So we want to check out your big call to actions and your buttons. The next one is information. So we want to look at your information. So the number one reason people jump off your site is they can't find the information easily that they need. What are the three bits of information that a customer comes to your website for? Is it to buy a product? And therefore, is returns and delivery important to them? Is it to book a restaurant? And therefore, is information on booking times the most important bit to them? Work out what it is that's most important to the customer and work out if it's easy and clear for them to take that action. The, the next thing is need. When, when it gets to forms or cart, we often ask customers 100 different questions. What's your first name? What's your last name? If you're a service business, what company are you from? How many people in your business? My question to you is, do you need all that information? But more importantly, do you use it? Because if we reduce the number of forms or number of fields on a form on our website, we can increase our conversions by 50%. So is there a way to just get first name and email address? And then at some point down the track, go back and ask them for more information. And realistically, are you actually using all that information right now? Okay, clicks. Are there too many clicks to purchase or to book? More than three and you've lost the customer. So we want to get it down to less than three or three clicks to purchase. And the last one, which is really important, is the speed of your website. So no one has time to watch a little whirring screen happening. So it's really important that your site loads quickly. Now, a little Tip, tip and trick. I'm just going to show you a tool that we use. One second. There's a tool that we use to test, test the speed of your website. So you can, Rachel's going to stick this in the chat. You can go here. I'm just going to have a look at, um, let's have a look at Bunnings. So you type in your website, you click on analyze speed, and you see they split it between mobile and desktop. This is a Google tool. So Google knows how important speed is to your customer and will rank you on Google based on the speed of your site. So if you've got a really poor performing website, it will rank you quite lowly, low if the speed is there. Anyone that's done that, type in the chat your speed. I'd love to know what the speed of your site is. Generally, 50 to 60 is okay. Anything in amber is okay. Anything in red, you've got to go back and relook at it and um, and, and basically improve the speed of your website. Has anyone done the test on the speed? It takes a little while, it's a bit slow and because I'm running multiple things, 56. That's not too bad, Jen, that's not too bad. So you'll be pleased to know but you're beating Bunnings. Although Bunnings have, Google knows Bunnings, so they, the speed is not as important to them. Yeah, still loading, cool. All right, so check the speed. So that's the first thing. All right, the next thing is making sure we've got the right tools for the job. So I'm just going to run you through the different platforms. So I get this question all the time. What should I build my website in? So I'm just going to take you through a couple of the pros and cons of each. Generally, most of the retailers I work with or, or product-based businesses, Shopify is a great option. The reason Shopify is a great option is because it has lots of different plugins. You've got plugins that allow you to do click and collect. You've got plugins that allow you to do upsell or subscription services. And Shopify, you can pretty much set up yourself and run yourself if you've got a level of um, you know, expertise or, or you, can, you can learn how to do it quite easily. And they've got a whole university of um, easy how-to um, guides. So Shopify is, is relatively straightforward. It's cheap to set up. It doesn't cost a lot of money. And you can design it in, in the way that you want it. You can buy templates that fit with your brand, um, that fit with your, your aesthetic. So great for e-commerce. For service businesses, um, WordPress is a good option. However, the problem with WordPress is it does require some technical expertise. So if you're going to use Web WordPress, you either have to put in a budget 
for a developer to be able to update it and make changes, or you have to be quite technical yourself. So I use WordPress because I can develop, I can build my own websites. But generally, if you don't have that level of technical expertise, I wouldn't recommend WordPress unless you've got a budget to pay someone. And Wix and Squarespace, again, a bit like Shopify for service businesses, really easy to set up, really easy to manage. They're drag and drop. You know, you could pretty much build a Wix site in a day or get someone else to do it. Now, one of the other questions I get asked a lot is the cost of building these things. So if you were to outsource and pay an agency to build them, and I kid you not, I spoke to a, a um, business yesterday who had had um, three different quotes, because I always say go and find three different quotes. And the quote for setting up the, from, this, from agencies, for setting up the Shopify store was from $5,000 to $100,000, exactly the same site. No difference in the brief. One was 5,000, one was 100,000. Like it just shows how bad this industry is at the moment and how much, you know, um, people are being taken advantage of. My rule of thumb when it comes to spending on a website, if you're doing a self-serve model, you know, one to 2K in terms of, you know, getting some design tweaks, getting someone to help you, I would say is a reasonable amount to spend. If you are outsourcing or getting someone to kind of build it for you, up to 5K is quite a reasonable cost. If you've got some custom design, um, if you've got some custom plugins that you want to put in, 5 to 10 to 15K is probably my ceiling limit for a small business. 100K is obscene. But anyway, um, you know, it just gives you a bit of a rule of thumb because I know a lot of you will be out there looking at um, quotes for this stuff. All right, so three things um, when you're building your website platform, and we're gonna go through some case studies in a minute, so you'll see these in real action. But the first thing is, is great design. You know, I, I speak to businesses all the time and, and with the tools and platforms we've got out there at the moment, there is no excuse for ugly, just saying people. So for WordPress and Shopify, WordPress has got a, a tool called Elemental, which just allows you to drag and drop. So if you're not a designer yourself, you can plug this in and it will cost you 50 to 100 bucks and you can drag and drop designs and design the page the way you want it. Because there's nothing more frustrating than building out a page and not having it kind of look the way you want it. And th that thing can suck a lot of time and energy. Shopify, there's one called Pagefly, which does exactly the same thing. But if you go into the app stores of each, you can just search up page design and it helps you create great product or service pages. Canva, obviously, for um, logos, any design elements you want on your site is a great tool. And one of my little secret free tools, because I'm all about the free when it comes to digital, is a platform called Unsplash. So Rachel will drop the, the link in there, but Unsplash allows you to basically use photography that isn't that ugly stock photography. I always prefer your own photos. They're so much better. But um, if you can't do that and you don't have a lot of your own imagery, which can be expensive, then just using something like Unsplash, there's beautiful imagery on there that looks, it is really engaging and, and, and great. The second thing is social proof. So one thing I see missing on our websites all the time is that social proof. Now, social proof is the new word of mouth. So we don't call up Auntie Bess anymore and ask her where she got those amazing bagels. Um, we don't call up, you know, our best friend Anne anymore and ask her where she got, you know, those kids shoes. What we do is we look at reviews online. We look at that's our new word of mouth. That's our auntie, auntie Bess, our, our Anne down the road or our best friend. This is where we see conversions on websites really grow. So social proof can increase conversions by 34%. And you don't necessarily need to have, you know, um, a, a, a plugin that pulls it automatically from your um, from your um, Google reviews. You don't necessarily need, this doesn't need to be a technology thing. This can be simply creating some little imagery 
on something like Canva, downloading it and then uploading it to your site. And if we've got time, I will show you how to do that. So social proof. The second, the third one is, is just ease of contact. I talked about your forms before and keeping your forms simple. Now, what we're seeing a lot of now is things like chatbots. And I know, again, when I speak to small business, that fills a lot of you with dread and fear because you're like, well, that means I've got to be always on and I'm always on as it is. And, you know, it's Easter holidays and I haven't actually taken a day off with my kids yet. I feel like that at the moment. But chatbots don't necessarily have to be real time anymore. Again, we've retrained a whole group of customers into being able to contact us, but actually knowing that we won't necessarily get back to them straight away. So having a chatbot on your site just gives them that other point of contact. But people are now used to your chatbot saying, I'm not around at the moment. I'm busy. My, I think mine says something like I'm running in hills. I'm probably cooking dinner. You know, I'm off doing some workshop. Leave me a message. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. That's enough. You don't have to be on 24-7. And there are some great chatbot tools out of there that literally take 10 minutes to plug in. So you've got really simple ones like Drift and you've got more complicated ones like Tidio. But what they allow you to do is create um, funnels. So you can literally program in if a customer comes in, ask them a couple of questions, you know, ask them what product they're looking for, ask them, you know, um, what service they're looking for and then respond with information on that and then say you'll get back to them. So always capture the email address. So. My challenge for you today, and as I said, there is a download for you to go through and review your platforms for those of you that have them. If not, now is the best time to start building your platforms out. So my challenge for you today is to go through and assess your platform. Give yourself a score for customer experience from one to five. I'd love you to drop that in the chat. So one to five customer experience for your website. Then if you're low, so if you're a one or a two and you know you've got to put some, some, put some um, development into it, work out, give yourself a cost. How much is that going to cost you? And are you going to change that? Are you actually going to update it? And then what's the time frame? I find with a lot of businesses, and I was actually with um, Shane Lenton from Q last week. We did a workshop together. Um, Q, he's the CIO of Q and Veronica Main. I find with a lot of businesses, we get overwhelmed by this digital stuff and we find it kind of analysis by paralysis. We can't move forward. So having really easy, actionable items like this allows us to put an action plan in place. So if you can score yourself and go, I'm a one for my website customer experience, I'm a one for social proof, I'm going to put some energy into that and it's going to take me two weeks. You've now got an action plan to move forward, which is really, really simple. So what I want to do now, you've got that, you've got that tool, you can download that and, and fill that in. What I want to do now is jump into a couple of case studies and walk through real life websites with you and show you what I would do with these particular websites. So the first one we've got on, I'm just gonna stop this share. The first one we've got on is um, Tony from Studio Elastic. Hi, Tony, how are you? Hi, Kelly, how are you? I'm good. Now, Tony's in the airport. <laughs> you know, it's, it's crazy life, we're all running, right? Yeah, and I will quickly take my mask off and hopefully I won't get stopped. But anyway, <laughs> nice to meet you all. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Do you want to just quickly tell us about your business? Just a, a one liner and then we might pop you on mute so we don't get the background noise. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm a designer, so I specialize in sportswear and swimwear design. So I have 25 years experience um, in local and international um, manufacturing and design of fashion products. Awesome. Awesome. All right. I'm going to open up your website. I'm just going to share with the team and I'm going to walk them through your website and we're going to give you some feedback on it. All right. So the first thing I, I'd love you to do when you get off is do that page speed and see what your page speed looks like. So the first thing I do when I get to your website, 
you've given me, and I know I got an understanding of your what you do. I'm just going to pop you on mute for a second. Um, I know I've got a really good understanding of what you do. The first thing when I get to your website is you're very clear on what your product is and what you do and what your services you offer. And you've worked with some amazing brands and your, your products are insane. I don't get that when I get to your website. So my first comment would be in here, actually putting something in there that tells me what you do. So I love that there's this great imagery and I love that I instantly am drawn to your imagery. But what it doesn't tell me on that front page is exactly what you do. So what I'd love to see is uh, something across the top of here that says, we are Studio Elastic, or I am. I've got 25 years in experience, experience in developing product for brands. So that's, that's the first thing. So really clear, this is what we do. The second thing is a call to action. So what is it you want people to do when they get to your website? What action do you want people to take? Let me just unmute you. Are you going to have um, to? There you go. Yeah, I suppose for me, imagery is kind of what sells kind of what I do. And then I kind of, that was kind of the impact thing. And then moving through the tabs and seeing about me and what I do and some of my technical kind of image um, drawing side and what services I offer. Amazing. So, but what, yeah. what is it, what's the actual action you want someone to take? Um, I suppose anyone that's looking for a design service for fashion, um, you know, predominantly in the sports and swimwear category, but then not limited to. I've done fashion products, I've done pet products. So um, I suppose engage me as their designer to design their product for them. Awesome. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So on that front page, what I would love to see is a call to action, a button that says, engage me contact me book a meeting with me now you could there's there's lots of tools like calendly that you can plug in which allow you to actually book session times in with people if that is what you want to do for service businesses it works really really well and plugging that into your site takes about 20 minutes so if you want to offer blocks of time or initial um, consultation up front you could possibly do that. If you just want them to contact you with an email, then just a contact button that says, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to use our websites as a sales point, but we can't sell if we don't tell the customer what we need them to do. So having that big bold button that says, contact me, engage me, connect with me, see more of my work, whatever it might be, you're trying to drive the person deeper into your website. There's a little tip that Apple do. I'm not sure if um, some of you may have heard of this, but if you go into an Apple store, the, um, the actual Macs and the devices are tilted. So every morning people go into Apple and they basically will walk in, a customer will walk in and they will touch the screen. This was pre-COVID. I'm guessing there are rules around this now, but they will touch the screen. The idea is as soon as you've touched the screen, and as soon as you've clicked on something, you're much more engaged with that product and you're more likely to purchase it. It's all neuroscience and psychology. So as soon as I clicked a button on your website to say I want to contact you or engage with you or go and find out more, I am more engaged with your product, with your brand, with your service. So what we want to do is create deeper connections with people when they're on our website. So just having that button helps create a deeper connection. So a little sentence about what you do and then a button. The other thing I would say as well is um, putting in a list of the brands that you've worked with on your homepage. So even if it was a scroll, it gives people, we talked about social proof improving conversions by 34%. It gives people that social proof because I don't know all of these brands. They look stunning and beautiful and I know they're high end brands, but I don't know who they are. So I'm trying to work out whether these brands are aligned with the brand that I'm trying to design or develop. So just having a little um, bar on the bottom. And I think I'm just checking the website you're on is. Oh, I can't see the technologies, but the website you're on 
is uh, Squarespace, isn't it? No, I can't hear you. Yes, sorry, I had to wait for you to unmute me. <laughs> That's okay, sorry. Um, so what I have um, just, I have my brands in another tab there. So I should have everything of my tabs have a little bit of it condensed on the front page that takes you into those. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So just having that line of brands that we've worked with. So yeah. let me just show you, um, I'll show you this site. Can you see this site, the Yummy? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So if we just scroll down here, and this is an amazing site. If you get a chance, everyone go and have a look at this. But you see here, it's got as featured in. High performing, high converting sites have that on the front page because again, it immediately gives me a sense of you. Tony's worked with some big brands here. Like she knows her stuff, you know, or she's been featured in some really good media outlets. So she is, she is a, a guru in her industry. So it gives me that feeling straight away. So just having that line on the bottom of your web page or on your web page is going to is going to increase your conversion rates. Okay. So then your showcase, I think again, um, I think just showing more, just just seeing if you can condense that page so that you show more on your showcase. Because again, mm -hmm. I mean, your what you've done is amazing. I'd just like to see more of it. Okay. Um, so your process that you go through, I think there's even an opportunity for you to do a little video walkthrough of the process you go through for a design perspective. I think that would be really interesting. Okay. And again, the reason we use video is because it gives us the closest to real world experience that we can possibly get without actually meeting you in person. Okay. So a little video introducing yourself and your background and experience would be amazing. Okay, fabulous. Makes sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Cool. And then on the last one is just your contact page. So one of the things we talk about in, in website development is above the fold and below the fold. So this is above the fold. So this is all I can see on my screen. I don't actually know that there's stuff below here. Okay. So what, what we try and do is put the important stuff above the fold. Okay. So if you go to um, a product page, for instance, let's say Udi's product page, their add to cart is always above the fold. So okay. they put it in a place that I can see it straight away. So anything important that you want to get a customer to do, put it above the fold. So you could move that image across and then basically put have this it side by side. You have it side by side. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think, I think, I mean, you've got a beautiful um, product, you've got a beautiful, um, you know, aesthetic in terms of the design that you've, you've done. I think it's just some tweaks to make the website work harder for you to drive people to connect with you more. Okay, fabulous. Awesome. Do you have any other questions? No, I just that I really enjoy your sessions and thank you for your feedback. Oh, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. Have a safe flight Thanks, wherever Kelly. you're going. I hope you have a good time. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye, Kelly. Bye. <laughs> and next we have Jen from Madam and Eve. Hi, Jen. Oh, I'm going to ask Kelly, you to can unmute. you hear me now? I can hear you perfectly. Yeah, awesome. I have taken so many notes just on what you were reviewing with Studio Elastica. This has been awesome. amazing. Awesome. I can't wait to get to yours because you have such a beautiful product. Thank I've been you. sat looking at this morning, everyone, and you're going to feel how I feel when you look at it in a minute, which is extremely hungry. <laughs> so let me share your website. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, bear with me. I just have to pull all my Zoom links out of the way. Okay, Madam and Eve here. Are you ready for this, people? All right. So tell me about your brand. So we are primarily a brick and mortar patisserie. Uh, and I think like for the website, our primary goal is getting pre-orders. So we don't, we don't offer delivery. So it's getting people into the shop to collect their orders and then also to be exposed to more of our products. And I'd say the secondary purpose of our website is brand building. Um, yeah. yeah, so that we can 
all, all the things that brand building does, right? Um, yeah. To help us grow eventually down the road into more locations, but everything would be pillared and have this really strong sense of who we are and to inform people about what we do and what sets us apart and that sense of character. So yeah. I really don't, I feel like our, our site has definitely been neglected since COVID and I feel like we've lost a lot of character. And also because I'm I'm managing the site on my own. Everything. Like I, I figured yeah. out WordPress and I've got, I mean, I am using Elementor, but then I'm relying on um, our point of sale system, which is Square to handle all the e-commerce aspect of our site. So I've built yeah. the site myself, what you see here, but then when you click through to actually order, then you go to a shopping cart system where I have very limited um, control creatively. I've tried to make it feel like it's still a part of our site, but ultimately yeah. it's not. And I'm, I'm using the free version that they offer. So it's even like on a, on a different domain. So it goes to madamandeve.square.site. Yeah, yeah. Which, um, just as an FYI, Google won't like that. So Google doesn't like it when you've got kind of two sites set up. And I think you mentioned a problem with Instagram as well. So yeah. to get you ranking at the number one in Google, which is what we want for all of you, you, you need to have a website, first of all, and you need to make sure your, your website's all connected and it's got a great experience. So let me walk through your site and give you some some feedback on on what I think you can do to make some quick improvements That's so amazing. firstly I would say put a highlight underneath this so one of the issues you've okay. got with this is for visually impaired it's actually really hard to read and again Google doesn't like it if your web copy is hard to read if it's not in colors that pop out so even up here just making these more, and I know that's your brand colors, but making them a little bit bolder so that it's easy for people to read and navigate around. Um, I mentioned on the last one, below the fold and above the fold, if you can reduce that, then we can see that there's stuff down here going on. So when you get down here, you've got, I love your copy, by the way, your copy is perfect. So we talk about developing product pages in the voice of the customer. And what I mean when I say in the voice of the customer, if you go back and have a look at that Udi site, all of you, when you get a minute, they actually talk about their product as if they were the customer. So if you look at your reviews or, you know, talk to your customers that have walked in your, your door, they will tell you in their own words what they think of you. If you can reflect those words back at them on your website, you will get a much higher conversion rate. So I love the way you have used things that your customers use, like sweet tooth, you know, um, brekkie in bed, all of those things are things that your customers would talk about, which is perfect. So that's awesome. So where the journey I think breaks down, and again, your product imagery is just stunning. Where I think the journey breaks down is you're right, the fact that I then jump off onto a separate website to then go and order. And I think if I if there was one thing, kind of one action I would take, it would be bring it into all one site. So either on a WordPress or if it's easier for you, but you sound like you're quite technical. So WordPress sounds like it could work. Plug in WooCommerce so that you've got a, a shop in WordPress or move off to a Shopify site if you're not technical and you're going to find that easier. But I would bring it all into one experience. Does that make sense? It does. I know, I know Square will allow you, like I can, I can bring our, our shopping page on my own domain. So it could be shop.madamandeve.com.au. But I don't know how much I'm able to customize their layout like once that happens and like you said yeah that like they, they don't have like the same font library like I don't the, the images it's all a bit different the parallax I would if you're if you're the reason you're using your point of sale is you want it to plug into your point of sale I would build it on something like a Shopify and then get a plug-in that plugs into your point of sale so rather than using the point of sale website mm -hmm. I would use a website and plug that so that it feeds information into the point of sale. Now in um, the app stores, there will be a um, Square plugin that you can use that will feed the data backwards and forwards because that's what it's about for you, right? You need to just make sure yeah. from a stock inventory perspective, you're feeding the data backwards and forwards. I would bring it all into the one website and not have these two split kind of domain things going on or two split customer experiences going on. So, 
only offering click and collect is fine. I know, I know uh, some amazing businesses that are offering um, click and collect and don't offer any um, order online or delivery or anything like that. But just making sure that it's really clear at the top that what you offer and people talk click and collect now, not necessarily pick up. They're actually, again, COVID has kind of re-educated us and got us now talking click and collect. So just having click and collect at the top or we only offer click and collect. So you can click in, cl collect in store at this address. So just getting really clear on that for the customer. But yeah, and then the gallery, I think you can bring that into the existing experience. What I do love is your About Us page, which talks about um, the qualifications that um, your chef has, which is amazing, um, that he was part of the Australian team in World Pastry. Again, real world experiences, adding a bit of video into that would be amazing. You know, a bit of video in store to bring people into the store would be great. So they're my kind of main things. I might jump to questions because I'm conscious of time. Jen, was there any other questions you had? I did. I put a couple in the Q&A, but I think for me, I'm, I'm a bit confused from a contemporary standpoint, how much information and navigational things do I need on the homepage? Like how much do we want people to live in the menu? Should everything just be, um, sorry, I can't, the, the, the term that you used. Uh, above the, the fold? Yes, above the fold. Should, yep. should everything sort of feel like it's there and then just get people to navigate to additional menus? Is that mobile friendly? Yeah. So, so if I was to redesign this, I would say you need to reduce that top bit and underneath I would have your, your media that you've been shouted out in. I would have the home, I would have the about us and I would have, um, I would have the contact and then I'd have your shop and underneath your shop, I would break out your products. So order online and break out your products from there. Keep it as simple as possible. You don't need to over-engineer this, but it's just thinking about your customer journey. One of the websites I would recommend that you have a look at is, let me just stop sharing, um, is a website called, I will come back to it, it it's escaped me, but it's, a, um, it's called Milk Bar, sorry. So it's a beautiful website. Let me just show you Milk Bar. You can shop by occasion, loyalty, location. So it's a really good template for what you're doing. So they do have loyalty and things like that, which I don't think you need at this stage, but just being able to shop via the different products and have information on your location as well. This is probably my go-to site for anything in the cake industry. Yeah, they're pretty famous. I would, yeah, I would love yeah. to, to, to be able to replicate what they do. Well, you, you have the aesthetic, you have the product, you know, so there's no reason why you can't replicate what they do. Thank you, Kelly. This was amazing. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to jump to Q and A because I'm conscious of time. We might go a little bit over if anyone wants to stay, I'm happy to uh, do an extra few minutes on this. So I'm just going to stop share and I'm going to open the Q and A. All right. So let's see. How can you know your conversion rate when your traffic and lead numbers are tiny? So how many people, if they're that small, it's hard to know. But if you're, you should all be connected to Google Analytics. So in your Google Analytics, if you're selling products, you will be able to, Google Analytics reports on something called the conversion rate. So it will tell you of all the people that come to your site, how many people have bought the products. Shopify do that as well in their, in their platform. Um, the other thing is on conversions, if you're a service business, how many people, what's the important conversion for you? How many people contacted you from your website contact page? If that's the conversion rate, because you know you can then, when they contacted you, sell them something, then that's the thing we're going to track online. What's the most important conversion point uh, rate to you? Um, D's asked, do these numbers include bots or do they reflect actual visitors that stay longer than 10 seconds? D, Google Analytics should only ever report on actual visitors. Every now and again, something goes skew with, but I would say 99% of the time, they only report on the visitors that come to your site. Um, Fiona says, I've just started an Etsy shop. Conversion rate is 7%. 
when do I let Etsy go and start my own online shop or should I persist with Etsy? That's probably more of a timing thing for you, um, Fiona, in that, yes, you should absolutely have your own Google store. Uh, sorry, your, your own website, not Google store, because Google will rank you based on you having your own website. The other thing is, if we put too many of our eggs in Facebook, Etsy, eBay's basket, if they change something, we potentially lose all that business overnight. So Facebook recently did a change where they changed the algorithm. And a lot of people lost hundreds of thousands of dollars overnight because they were so reliant on Facebook for their advertising. So for me, it's all about building up your own website, your own presence, your own database. So if you have time, Fiona, which many businesses don't, I would absolutely say you should be moving that to an online store, um, your own online store. How do you organize social proof on the website? Is it just a push or does it have its own section? So I will quickly show you um, the milk bar one. Let me quickly show you this. So, or actually it's Tileco. So Tileco, and this is becoming quite common in, um, in the UK and Europe. This one, for instance, has it actually has its own reviews page. So you can get really fancy with this, or you can literally go to Canva. You can type in review like this. You can grab one of these templates. So you type in review, you grab a template, you upload your beautiful cakes, Jen. You put in your customer's name. You type in the beautiful things that they said about you. You download that and you upload that to your website. And you can put that on your homepage or on your product page. That's a really quick time hack that will take you about 10 minutes to do. Um, how much content should be on the home page versus supporting pages to navigate through? So I think we, we touched on that, Jen, so I won't cover that off again. Um, let me just get back to Q&A. OK, someone said um, a lot of the images of the studio elastic product in the gallery are quite low res. Does that matter or is it important that they load faster? You need to get the balance between the two. And again, on most websites now, there are plugins that allow you to reduce the size of the imagery without reducing the quality of the imagery. So if you go to the Shopify app store, you just type in literally um, image compressor and there will be an image compressor in there that stops you reducing the quality of the imagery. You need to keep the quality as high as possible. Um, which is best, Wix or Weebly for someone who's not design tech savvy? I've used um, both. I prefer personally, I prefer Wix. I find Wix a lot easier to drag and drop things. Um, any web, great websites to look at if in the industry of handbags? Um, Katerina, if you send me an email afterwards, kelly at kellyslesser.com, I will send you a list of um, really good websites to look at um, to give you some examples. Um, how to improve SEO on site. Um, so that is one of the sessions I am running. Um, that is in three or four weeks time. If you jump on the reboot and book into that, it's the one that's about getting to the top of um, search engines. I'm running that in a few weeks. So I will answer all your SEO questions, but that's a longer question than we have time for. Do you feel Shopify is a better platform for fashion than WordPress, WooCommerce, which I have? Shopify is a better platform for e-commerce. It has been built for e-commerce. They have invested a lot of money in e-commerce. There are plugins for everything you need regarding e-commerce, whether that be, like I said, click and collect, image compression, um, abandoned cart, subscription services. There is a plugin for everything you need. So if I was developing an e-commerce store, I would go towards Shopify. WordPress and WooCommerce are, are, are great if you have technical skills or if you're prepared to pay someone. We haven't launched our website. This is um, Hina. Hi, Hina. We haven't launched our website yet. We'll be starting creating one from next week. My question is, 
what do you advise someone creating their own e-commerce website for retail fashion? So are you, are you doing that? If you're doing that yourself, the first thing is I would get really, really clear on what it is you're going to, the structure of the website. So I would start to map out what are the things you need. So just as Jen asked earlier on, what are the, what are the menu items that are needed? Um, what are the things that customers are going to look for? So if you think about a fashion site, so let's say you're selling dresses and um, shoes. Let's say when I come in, what I want to be able to see straight away is your best selling items. I want to see the things that are going to grab me, the things that other people love. So I would start to map out if it's it, it. Sometimes I do it on a piece of paper. I literally get a piece of paper and I draw a box and I go, OK, well, at the top of my page, my first menu is shoes and my second menu is dresses and my third menu is X. And just mapping it out and being really clear, because what a lot of people do is they build a website without thinking through what the website actually is or what it's going to do. So getting really clear on. Yes, Susan, definitely getting really clear on the menu items first and then what's going to sit on each of the pages behind that. So planning is absolutely key. And I do find that the most most of the websites that go wrong or most of the websites where someone's paid a developer, a designer to do it for them and it's come back and it's not what they want. When I've asked them if they have briefed them incorrectly or even briefed them, it's normally been a quick email that said, we want a website like this. It's not been very clear about what it is they're trying to achieve. So planning is is critical um if you're just starting out and don't have any social proof yet how do you suggest getting around that okay so tanya if you've got a product or a service i'm sure you will have got someone whether it be your mum your sister your friend you would have got someone to try that out i showed you that little canva hat use your friends your family to basically um you know as long as they've had a good experience to basically um, give you a review and use those reviews on your website until you can start to kind of get that review social proof machine working, use that on your website. The other thing is, is go out to media. And as I said, we've got Lisa in a couple of weeks, so she'll tell you how to pitch to media, but go out to um, media and basically get there. Once, once they publish something on you, use them as social proof. Like put those on your website. So as featured in, you know, and it might be the Manly Daily or the City of Sydney Weekly, whatever it might be. Make sure you're you're using that as social proof as well. Jenny, uh, the last question and I'm going to wrap it up. Jenny, you said how often to update or refresh a website? I would look at my website every month and see what's working or what's not working. If it's not broken and you're getting good conversions, don't refresh it. But if you're not getting great conversions, that's when you need to look at it and decide whether you, you need to upgrade your website. All right. Oh, my goodness. There are so many questions in there. And I will have a look at them later. And if there's any I can answer, fill in the survey form. And if you've got any additional questions, if there's any I can answer, I will jump in there and answer them and send you an email with the answers to those questions. Um, you have been amazing. Thank you. Um, thanks for all the questions. As I mentioned, we've got a one week break for Easter and then we're back on the 26th of April. I think Rachel will put the link in with Lisa Mux, editor of, uh, in chief of news.com.au. Um, please fill in the form, the survey form. If anyone wants to be a case study for Lisa's session to learn how to pitch to media, you'll have to submit a pitch and then she'll give you feedback on it great opportunity to get in front of the biggest news site in Australia. So if anyone wants to do that, fill that survey form in. Um, I want to thank the City of Sydney and the New South Wales Government Business Connect program for putting on these events. I really hope you've enjoyed the webinar and I look forward to seeing you all in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you to Jen and Tony for sharing your websites with us. We really appreciate it. Have the best Easter.